Melissa's. Okay, go ahead. Um, Melissa's just running a few minutes late. Okay. Um, we can start without her, I guess. Yep. Um, okay, and the, the agenda kind of got messed up on the uh, uh, town web page, but if you open the uh, agenda and the PDF file at the bottom, it is organized correctly. Um, and the first thing to do is review the agenda. Anybody have any problems with it? Steve, you just one point that you listed the numbers of the parcels 8082 and 239 but you have to show the map that's on map 28 so we, without objection i'd like to add the the identification of map number 28 that's uh, the that's the yeah it's a chipman Oops. call issue okay no. yeah my mistake um Map 28. Thank you, John. Okay, uh, how about we approve the minutes uh, for July 29th and August 11th? Uh, anybody have any problems with them? Hearing none, how about a motion to approve them? I move we approve the minutes of what date am I approving these for? July 29, 2021. And, oh, you wanna do them one at a time? Yeah, I think we have okay. to. Okay. Um, do I hear a, hear a second? Second. Okay. All in favor, Barbara? Aye. John? Aye. Sonia? Aye. And aye for me, so four <laughs> out of five. Um, a motion for August 11th meeting uh, minutes. Anybody want to make that motion? I'll move. Oh, go ahead. Okay, and a second. I'll second that. Okay. And uh, I guess we don't have to worry about discussion. We, uh, Barbara? Yeah. Uh, aye. John? Aye. Sonia? Aye. And aye for me. So the minutes have been approved. Um, and I put this in uh, the quick recap of progress or lack of progress because I didn't expect any progress. I, I figured we'd zing right through those four issues because I don't think anything has happened on them. But I then attended the uh, CONCOM meeting last night, yesterday. And uh, the second two items were on that agenda. The Lieutenant Island Southwest corner got pulled off, so there's nothing to report there. But the access road before Lieutenant Island Bridge, um, they basically got nixed. Uh, the Audubon had suggested putting in two inch gravel and um, can't do that. So uh, that's the lack of progress, I guess. Steve, if I, if I may, I, um, you may. Well, I was disappointed that it was uh, nixed, but it was very interesting to listen to the reasoning behind it. And the reasoning behind it all had to do with climate change and sea level rise. Yeah. And it, it has sort of thinking about that overnight. Uh, I think that's an issue that we as a committee probably need to pay more attention to because we're, we're talking about access to, um, to uh, salt water in almost everything we do, where there's a few exceptions, are access to salt water. And all of those accesses are going to be affected by sea level rise, yep. um, as will shell fishing, you know, shell fishing grants. We briefly discussed this when we were talking about Lieutenant Island um, Northwest, but I think it ought to be um, higher on our um, radar screen. And we may actually have to sit back and look at the access points within the town of Wellfleet and 
ask ourselves the question, what happens uh, with sea level rise? The, the NOAA data um, say we have uh, about until um, 2030 and then things are really gonna take off. So um, uh, that, could, that could change that could change the well plate map significantly. And uh, I think that was that thinking was what was behind the, the concern about the uh, the Lieutenant Island Bridge access road. Yeah, the if you look at the map, there's a uh, basically the Google map showed that puddle with water in it and then a stream running out from it. So that's obviously um, at sea level. Um, I don't know whether the road is covered. Uh, probably the road is covered during high tide. Does anybody know that? It the water level the water line can come up there, but mostly like as far as there, and you can tell by the the grass that gets pushed up. So my question is, are they planning to make no improvements on that road? Just what what is going um, on? Is that it's it's been postponed until the next meeting. Uh, and uh, then Audubon will have to bring back another proposal. I, uh, some people said, well, let's put sand in, but that's not gonna help much. As soon as it gets wet and somebody drives over, it's gone. So I'm not exactly sure what's happening. And uh, when we get to, uh, should, uh, the, should our PAC consider taking Tuskegee Town on parcels? That might be interesting. If you look at the, uh, the map, that includes that road, the whole section of land to the right of it. There are a series of roads, and to the right of the last of the roads, I can't remember what it's called, but I can find out, is uh, all owned by Audubon. So there might be some other way of getting to the end of that uh, strip of land other than the road that we've been using by going through, uh, let me see. By going down uh, uh, Caboa, Catboa Road and then Ring Road, and at that point you are uh, <clears throat> everything on your left is owned by the Audubon, pretty much, and you're uh, at the end, not very far away from I think where you guys want to go anyway. Right, but then we're running into a similar issue of. Um, pushing the access up a hill, which complicates things for shell fishermen. Okay, well that I can't tell from the map. Right. Mm -hmm. um, okay. Do you do you fish there, Sonia? I, I do quite a bit. So I, that so I've actually had to make probably at least a couple thousand dollars worth of repair to a vehicle just from driving through that puddle. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a truck eater um so you know and i would think that that hole would be better off filled up and not submerging vehicles than you know having all that fluid get underneath a vehicle and then get dragged out to sea i mean but that would just be my thinking um, it's a very important access road that's actually really great fishing, both for clams and oysters in that corner of, of Lieutenant. And that's the only, I mean, there's the other access road we've been discussing on the other side, but that that access road is even more difficult. Um, you know, the road's in poor condition, not nearly as big of a hole, but you still have to cross quite a bit of marsh to get out to the flats. Um, so, you know, the logistics there of, of you know, whether it be pulling a tote or a cart, um, moving all that weight across all that marshland, I would think that would have more of an impact on a marsh than driving down the other side where there's an established path through the marsh where you can get out to the flats. You know what I mean? Um, it's a little bit more direct, whereas that the, the northern access point, um, there's a lot of holes. Um, path isn't perfectly clear. I think it just seems to do more damage cutting across that side to me. So you're uh, saying you would uh, enter this whole marsh from uh, within Island Road? You enter it, so on the other, so way 100, that's the other access oh. point to that same. Oh, I see, I see. Yeah. 
can go all the way across. Right. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. I, I thought, I thought Sonia, listening to the CONSCOM discussion that um, anything that had to, that might damage a salt marsh. Right, was problematic for them, right? Problematic, and that, I mean, I don't know how many times Barbara Brennesel phrased that. Right. Um, one thing that was suggested is we could, we could put a little bridge across the puddle, um, which would, and if that, that if that bridge was only for a pulled cart, it wouldn't be a big deal. If it was for a truck, then, then it's, uh, it'd be significantly more problem, problematic. Yeah, that was another pushback from Gonscom. They didn't want the vehicles there. Yeah, and I think that's kind of unfair because we're already losing the access on the north side. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I feel like that north side, that that really is going to go. I mean, that's that's going to get taken up by the marsh. But the road on the south side um, is much higher. Um, and except for that hole, it's in much better condition. So, I, and, you know, you think when we're talking about access points, and you look at a place like Chipman's Cove and there's plenty of access points, right? Um, when you move down to South Wellfleet, there really aren't. I mean, there's only two ways to get into that area and you still have to walk pretty far um, and get through Marsh to even to even work in that area. So I, I feel like those two access points are very important, but we're very likely to lose way 100. Um, so I would hate to see us lose the southern access point you know and it's not lost mind you right like you could still walk it but it's a very long way to walk um with shellfish um especially during vibrio i don't know if you guys are aware of the icing regulations that you know basically from the time an oyster comes out of the water you have two hours to get that oyster on ice so <clears throat> having a vehicle closer to where you're working is very important um you know that really only affects that area for a couple weeks but still i mean even without the icing regulations it, it you know it, it's much better for shell fishermen to be able to get a vehicle a little closer and that road has been there i, I don't know what the history is but it, it's been there and it's been used um for quite a bit of time so i i feel like it's a little unfair um you know, in the shellfish department as well, I don't know if Nancy's here or not, I think she's at a meeting this morning, but the shellfish department as well suffers quite a bit because they still have to go and patrol the area and drive through that. And it's just getting bigger and bigger. Um, I want to say last year, it was probably, if you cross that puddle, it was probably up to your bumper. Sonia, um, there's a shellfish advisory board meeting tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I, I, I'm pretty sure I have a conflict, but um, you might talk to Becca and see if you could, if they would add you to the agenda, just essentially to um, let them know that, that there's, that there's a, there's a, there's a problem on the, on uh, Lieutenant Island, and I'm not sure this committee can solve it by itself. Right. Yeah, we might need some. We need some help. Well, Nancy was there last night and made a made a good pitch, but I think what I heard I had to I had to leave part way through. But what I heard it didn't it didn't have the same sense of urgency that you just expressed, right? Which I think um, is important. An another uh, interesting thing was that the people that do uh, sea mammal rescue. I have to use that road too. Sometimes. Absolutely, and that's that again. That's another. I mean, crossing the marsh in that area is it's almost impossible. I've actually tried it. I've actually tried to park on Lieutenant Island Road and walk across the marsh to fish, and it's impossible. It's all, like treacherous. Like you'll sink into mud holes and all that sort of thing. So, um, that Silver Spring Inlet is it's sandier, so the footing is better out there. Um, so as you access, you know, from that south road where the hole is and park at the end, the, the footing is much better to get out through there. So I can imagine if you want to do some kind of a marine rescue, it'd be much safer accessing through there than trying to like park on Lieutenant Island Road and trudge across the mud. 
it's nearly impossible. Okay, well. But, but Sonia, the, the, I mean, I, I, I'll put it out, sort of from my NRAB hat now, I, I, I talk about sea level rise. Uh, it's something that we're going to have to discuss with uh, Nancy and the Shellfish Advisory Board because at some point that marsh is going to become wetter and wetter. Right. But I, I feel like it's unfair to not make an improvement to access. No, no, I, 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 I agree with you, but we have to look at, we have to deal with the short term. Yeah. And I think we're on the same page, but there's a long-term issue that's, that, that re really requires some, I think some creativity. Right. Something Which for your generation, not mine. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> um, um, we have we have to be honest about about it because it is a re, it is unfortunately a real phenomenon, and a certain amount of it is is uncorrectable. We can't go back on it. Another little aspect of that puddle is uh, it appears that people went around the puddle on the left over a private landowner's land and he put a fence up to prevent that that drive uh, yeah i believe people were doing that on foot there's obviously not enough space to drive <laughs> well, that, uh, it, it did look like there was it does it did look like the uh, people had driven around the puddle to the left and they're going out um, around the puddle people have tried to avoid because the puddle keeps getting deeper and deeper in the center and and some people try to drive more to the right to avoid the deepest point. Um, to the left is a bit of a footpath, but it, it actually like kind of drops off into the hole. So I can't imagine anyone would <laughs> try to drive to the left. But, well, but that's a possible fix. If we can uh, get an easement over that guy's uh, last 20 feet of his property. I think it would take some work, but maybe, you know, it might take like some bulldozing or something. I don't know if that'll, yeah. Fly with cons con either so or the owner I, that might be a hard sell but yeah um, um, yeah probably okay um this was supposed to be a short uh item so i, I think we do have to add that access road for old town island to a future agenda and um is someone on this committee going to go to the uh, SAB committee tomorrow? Uh, I can try. Depends on the time. What, I don't know what time it is either. I have a meeting at 10 in the morning. Is that the time that they meet? I don't know. I'm going to see if I can find out. Yeah, I'm, I have meeting 10 to 12, but I could try something. Actually, it's, no, it's 9.30, it starts at 9, mine starts at 9.30, so. Sonia, I assume since it's an SAB meeting that it's it's at high tide, I assume they will have already checked that, but I don't know. I see Melissa, Melissa is just here. Let's look at the calendar. Hi, Melissa. Hi, everyone. Sorry, I'm late. Hi, Melissa. Um, and we're trying to figure out when the Shellfish Advisory Board meeting is tomorrow. 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Okay. Which is probably high tide close. Um, I could attend it, but it doesn't make any sense for me to. So, yeah, I mean, I, I'm I'm gonna see if I can go. I just gotta just check my morning schedule and make sure there's nothing else going on. But um, and I could get in contact with Thomas. I just had a phone call with him yesterday, so um, and see if it's something I can bring up. And you would be the most logical, Melissa. Do you uh, fish out that area? We're talking about the road uh, just before you get to the Lieutenant's Island left with the big hole in the middle. You're muted. Sorry, what was the question? I'm wondering if you fish off that same area that we're talking about. We're talking about the uh, uh, 
when you're going going toward Lieutenant Island, take a left before you go across the uh, road to the bridge. And yes. uh, and there's the big puddle there that has uh, cost Sonia two thousand dollars worth of repairs to her truck. Oh, geez, <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised if it did for me too. Um, I, yeah, I do fish there. Okay, so either one of you could, or both. Melissa, um, the the background is that the Conservation Commission. Uh, wouldn't accept Audubon's plan to fill the that puddle with um, two-inch mm -hmm. gravel. Mm -hmm. and, oh no! And yeah. what's really behind that is um, a, a sea level rise and their concern at all costs to um, protect the salt marshes. Okay. They didn't want, they didn't want anything hard in the salt marsh that. Uh, the, the gravel and uh, some of the things they said, well, you know, you could take a, a big wheeled uh, wagon through there. And I don't know whether you could or not, um, but that's a long haul. It's and a long Sonia haul. Made a, Sonia cool. made a good point that uh, that's not very practical. Right. Um, I don't know many that would hike it out. Um, that's unfortunate. So the SAB is going to meet on this? No, the, the, I just, I happened to, because John Duane had a question about it uh, with me. I had just happened to notice that they're meeting tomorrow morning at 10. And I, I thought that uh, either uh, Sonia or yourself or both could, could just sound the alert. Uh, now, um, so, and point out our concerns. Now, and Nancy, Nancy was at the meeting too, and she, she's she's likely to raise the issue also. Okay, is that something we're able to do at a meeting, or does that have to be on their agenda? Like, would we have to, you know, speak to someone about? I th that? I think a meeting can it when it says review the agenda. I I assume that that they they would say. You know, brief discussion about Lieutenant Ireland or something like this, and then you could make your point. Okay. They probably couldn't have a detailed discussion or a vote, but they but they could accept the news. Right. Okay. Okay. Um, anything else on this uh, quick recap that uh, wasn't supposed to take very long? <laughs> <laughs> It was an interesting discussion. I attended as well. Oh, were you at the conference? Yeah, yeah it, it was very interesting. Yeah, I mean, I can see where they're coming from. I can see where the shellfish yeah. are coming from. I can see where the uh, marine mammal rescue people right. are coming from. Yeah, I just, at some point, I think the chair or another member of the commission use the term retreat, you know, that Audubon should be thinking about retreat. Um, so uh, just something to, for us to think about, you know, as, as we consider, you know, how we can advocate for public access. Yeah. By, by retreat, is, is that the same as the football term punt? <laughs> I, well, I've heard the phrase retreat or managed retreat before, um, but I like the football analogy. In other words, give up. Well, it's a term of art, you know. I just I hear discussions of that here and there, um, so it just caught my attention. Yeah. Well, we I don't, I don't think we we're, we're prepared to do that. Yet. No, no, I understand. That's what I'm saying. That's why hearing it makes me think of what we want to think about in terms of our advocacy. So. Yeah. Let's let's move on. I think we've yep. done what we uh, can. Okay, we had the um, the article. I sent out from Boston Globe, um, can a single word change our restrictive beach laws by Billy Baker. And uh, for anybody who's read that, I think probably the answer is no, uh, not without compensating all of the people who own property down to the uh, low tide mark. Anybody agree with that? Well, when I first saw it, I was fairly excited and then then you what read the they say the third the third term was recreation and that has to be clearly defined 
Yeah. I mean, some people might think of recreation going out onto a beach at 9 p.m. and playing the drums. Mm -hmm. uh, that, that's hardly likely to be, be positive. So I think it's good that the issue has been raised, um, but it needs a lot of, a lot of work to... Um, and John, you were the one... That and it's, and, and um, you ought, it has to go through the general court. Most of most of the members of the general court aren't from the aren't from the um, from Cape Cod. And who knows how the inland folk are going to look at this? Yeah. It might open a door for them. So, um, John, wasn't it you who uh, brought that article to my attention? Or was it yes, somebody? it was. And I say my I was I still am in. I started up being excited and then the more I think about it, I, I remain interested, but it's, uh, I'm, I'm glad Senator uh, Sear brought it up, but it, it, it starts a good discussion, but it's not a trivial matter. No. And also that uh, got me on this uh, coastal access uh, program, Massachusetts. And uh, Melissa, you had looked into that, uh, kind of hoping to get some uh, assistance on um, legal matters, I think, and then you found out that that uh, had been discontinued. So, do you know any more about how the rest of the program, coastal access program, is there anything still there? I was told uh, that the program no longer exists, so I don't know anything else. The whole program doesn't exist? Yeah, I had asked if there was anything similar and he said he would get back to me if he found anything, but he highly doubted it. Okay. Okay, well, I guess we can forget about that too. Okay, well, that's what we wanted to do is just discuss this. And if anybody else has any more discussion, raise your hand. Otherwise, let's move on. Um, and should RPAC consider taking custody of town owned parcels that would enhance public access? Uh, we've kind of gotten excited about that possibility, but I don't know how many town owned parcels there are that could be used for uh, public access. And I don't even know how to do a search on that. I think I've seen a map that had them highlighted town owned parcels, but uh, I can't, I couldn't find it again. Anybody have any? Uh, Opinions on that? Um, I'll just, I, I don't know much too much about the process or what it means, but I thought it might be useful to have this discussion. So I appreciate it for having it. <laughs> um, I did think though, when I first found out about the possibility um, that perhaps there's quite a few town landings owned by the town, but not in conservation because they're access points that could be potentially taken into custody by our committee for the purpose of preventing the town from selling them. Um, so I don't have a list of the town landings, but one that I know of that is not in conservation is Powers Landing. Um, but other than that, I'm, I don't know too much else about the process. We can look into it. Um, the other piece of it was that it sounds like there could be um, this, doing this could help the town secure a Friends of Herring River grant, which I also don't know too much about. But if this is something that our committee is interested in, we can look into it further. Does anybody think it would be possible for our committee to uh, negotiate transfer of uh, one of the conservation uh, uh, properties to us? So it could use it as an access. I'm thinking uh, way 100. Um, do, do we know what restrictions there are, you know, on, mm -hmm. on the property, you know, conservation restriction, other restrictions? Well, the restrictions, if it stays in, uh, in their bailiwick is no automobiles. Okay. Uh, which kind of shoots us down. So I, and I don't know what, uh, how standing, I, I mean, if we took over one of the, one of the, their parcels, could we change the uh, rules and allow automobile access? 
Okay, I don't know. Um, there, there is on the uh, Conservation Commission website, you have to dig fairly deep, but you can find it, uh, a, a list of, um, no, sorry, it's not on that website. It would be on the Open Space Committee website. The, a list of the regulate the the rules that ap apply to a property once it's um, uh, been transferred to the conservation commission. Okay. Part of the problem with dealing with anything that has already been transferred to the conservation commission is it can only be undone by a vote at uh, the uh, general yeah. court. Right. It's oh. really hard to change. It's, yeah, it's an, they call Article 97. You need two thirds vote of the commission itself, the Conservation Commission, and then it goes to the legislature for a vote. And it's, it is, it, it, it happens occasionally, um, but not commonly. Well, okay, we can shoot that idea down, I guess. Um, but I think we should, we, I think the idea of, um, can we can we take over appropriate town-owned parcels? Um, is a good one. I I suppose I could, on behalf of the committee, send an email to the town administrator with a copy to Ryan and ask how we would go about that. And uh, I would probably get directed to town council. Probably. But I, I, I would be glad to do that because I think it's a, a great idea. Maybe, uh, and I, this is probably what we should have done, um, is have Ryan Curley join a meeting and explain the process maybe. I feel like we probably should have done that before this meeting. <laughs> so we could better understand what's going on, you know, because I feel like um, in order for us to know what we'd be getting into and, and what the process is, It'd be helpful to have someone come on and explain it and, and i assume that'd be ryan so far we've only gotten some email correspondence regarding the herring river restoration and things like that um but no real details on on what that entails i i did send around um there's an application process and it's laid out pretty clearly what needs to happen but we would need to decide which parcels we want to take into custody and then we can start the application process Mm -hmm. um, but it was laid out in, in an attachment of an email that was sent out. Okay. Um, and the timeline for that was it, you have to work with um, town meeting mm -hmm. um, schedule. So I think we would have to submit that application by late fall. So that, that sounds like an issue that probably uh, would be best at the Springtown meeting. I think they'd probably try to keep the agenda at the fall meeting fairly limited. So what, um, could you resend that as, uh, and uh, Melissa and uh, we can we can put it in a serious way on the next, on our next agenda. Okay. Um, yeah, wait, yeah, so I, I'll resend it out. Um, my thought when I, I was looking into this was that this would be a useful process for our town landings, which are not owned by conservation. So there's, we can compile a list um, and think about it. I think we also need to, as we talk to people, include Suzanne Thomas, because you mentioned Powers Landing. And I, I think either she or the um, Harbor Master has some activity there. There's a bunch of kayak racks. Somebody put them up, and uh, I don't know if that if that falls under um, Suzanne's um, control or William's wills. So that's something else that to keep in mind. But I th I think let's start look at the, look at what you sent out before in a serious way. Okay. Is there anything else we can talk about this? We 
would like to do it, we need to uh, get serious about it. So it's a topic for next meeting. Yeah. Okay. You want to go on to Chipman's Cove? The uh, thing about that is uh, we've already lost three parcels that would uh, have helped access to the Conservation Commission. I guess that was done, right? No. Oh, it wasn't? No. Um, the Open Space Committee is proposing these again for uh, the next town meeting. I don't know if it'd be the fall or the spring one. To transfer to uh, conservation? Yes. So and we could uh, step in maybe and get them transfer them to us. Does anybody know those parcels and are they uh, interesting to us as access points to Chipman's Cove? Can someone show the map? I'm not sure where that is. These are, these are just below the, the north end of Indian Neck and the, the parcel number 82 is on the base uh, on the harbor side. The, the, right. the parcels 80 and 239 is, is basically out in Chipman's Cove. I think someone's popped a map up and 80 is um, next to the road. So uh, I don't know whether you can see that well enough to see what those three lots are and make a decision on whether yeah. they're any good or not. So 80, okay. 82 is over on the harbor side and um, 80 and 239 are on the Chipman's Cove side. So can you get, can you get to the water through those parcels? Is there a footpath somewhere over there, Melissa? Are you, do you know? I feel like um, Matt, we have to look at map 22 to see. I think there's like a footpath just above 81. Um, mm -hmm. There are some footpaths through the 80, 238. That's basically tide flats, correct? Um. I don't, I don't know what the uh, little half mark is. Uh, that looks like flats. Yeah, that, that's the flats. 239 okay. is flats. Yeah, so I mean, I, I would say, I'm not sure exactly where the, the current footpaths are, um, according to this map that people use for shellfishing. I want to say they're maybe just a little bit north and a little bit south, but um, you know, with the discussion of sea level rise, you know that this could potentially be interesting for us in the future um, for access points in case any of those other spots along Chipman's Cove um, become inaccessible. So that would be something to think about then for. Um, well, I I don't know whether it's yeah. too late or not. It's on a town meeting agenda probably to uh, transfer them to conservation. I know that that was Ryan Curley's concern previously um, when the previous proposal went in for those to go into conversation. It, the idea was rejected the last time around um, for the same concerns about you know losing access uh, for shellfishing in Chipman's Cove in the event of sea level rise. So um, I imagine that argument will come up again. Yeah, so, so what do we have to do? Do we have to go to uh, Curly and say, uh, is it possible for us to uh, be the recept reception, recept people who receive those three parcels or not? I would think so. Maybe this is something to add into the next discussion, right? If we go further with this. Um... Well, we wait too long, we'll miss our window. Right. I think what we could we could do, um, let's see, we we could put this on the on the next agenda, um, and uh, have someone draft a letter to the select board saying that we we 
we disagree with this um, control plan um, for the for, because of the reasons that Sonia just just mentioned um, in the in the in the process I think we need to talk to Nancy I, I remember her talking to us about this six months ago and I didn't think she was terribly concerned but I'd like I'd like to renew that conversation. The parcel that's on the harbor side, 82, I, I have much, much less concern about that. And I think it is, might actually be good to put it into, into uh, Conservation Commission control. Yeah. I would um, just mention that 82 on the harbor side was of concern because um, I think the water at one point washed over the road and that was the concern that um, we might have to move the road and when you can't do that when it's in conservation. Um, move over what road? Over what road? Uh, Nasa, it, I don't know what it's called. <laughs> um, the paved road going to the north side of Indian Neck Beach. Yeah, well, that that road, the road is not part of is not part of parcel eighty two. Between two parcels, between eighty and eighty two, the road runs between the parcels. Yeah, right. But if the road were have to be moved, it would have to be moved into a parcel. Okay, I see what you're worried about. Rather than just raising the road, they, they might re, might raise and redirect it. I think that was the concern I remember. Um, okay, fair enough. So in, in, this, in this letter, could we have kind of a fallback position, which is if, if, if it is conveyed to the Conservation Commission instead of you know, this committee that it be with you know, permanent access rights you know, preserved as an alternative. Okay. <clears throat> that would make sense. In case we can't get traction on actually getting it conveyed to us. Yeah. Just as a second idea. Yeah, and then isn't the other issue with conservation, if that land was in conservation, then there would be an issue with vehicles, right? Yeah. Say, like Melissa was saying, say the road moved and the road ended up being in the conservation land. Then would there be issues with vehicles? But then I suppose not if it's a road. That would cut off a lot of uh, the north end of. Mm. Um, okay, what what should we do next? Should we? Um, Barbara, is that something that you would be willing to do? Is draft draft a letter to uh, select board? Um. Yes, although I feel like I need a little more to educate myself a bit more. Um, so um, I think, do we, did you want it by the next meeting or is, it, is there gonna be more discussion of it after the next, at the next meeting? Does anybody else uh, think that it's time? I, I would uh, yes. move that uh, Barbara, Sonia and Melissa form a, a team and produce a, a draft letter to the select board on our position in time for the next meeting. Is that gonna interfere with uh, or be bad about the uh, open meeting laws? If we, we can post it, if we have a discussion, you know, I can circulate something, we can post a meeting of a subcommittee, you know, that's the way to take care of the open meeting law problem. If, um, well, the other thing is if it's only two of you, uh, yourself plus either Sonia or Melissa, then the open meeting law doesn't kick in. True. We would just have to be, you know, careful not to, right. you know, forward the emails. That's, that's always, you know, something that I see. So, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm happy to work on it, um, you know, however the committee wants. So either Sonia or Melissa, could you work with Barbara and try and put something together here? Yeah, I could do it. <clears throat> Thank you, Sonia. 
And thank you, Barbara. Sure. So, um, so that was a, that was a. I moved that uh, Barbara and Sonia prepare for the next meeting uh, a statement of our concerns about <laughs> parcels 8082 and 239 uh, being the Conservation Commission. That's a that's that's a motion. Second. Okay. Any discussion on this motion? It is map 28, by the way, you pointed that out. Did I get that right, John? Yes, it's 20 map, it's on map 28, yeah. yeah. And as much, oh, sorry, I'll second the motion. And any discussion? Can we vote on it? Barbara? Aye. John? Aye. Sonia? Aye. Melissa? Aye. And I? Unanimous. And thank you too for uh, taking this on. Sure. So, whatever um, information there is on the proposal to convey it to conservation, I would, you know, I would, if someone could point me towards that or recirculate it. Thanks. <clears throat> Okay. Does anybody have any uh, information on that? Uh, I can get in contact with Ryan. Okay. We'll see what I can get. Okay, because uh, we heard about it uh, two or three meetings ago. Didn't do anything on it then. So see what you can find, Sonia. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Uh, another part of the Chipman's Cove was parking issues, and I don't know anything about that. I'm not exactly sure where the agenda item came from. Is that uh, north of uh, what we've been, these parcels that we've been looking at, or on the east side, or where? Anybody know? Okay, if we, nobody knows, I guess it's not an issue. When I when I read that, I assumed the the issue was that um, the parking has to be along the road. The only uh, parking lot per se is uh, up at the north end of the of uh, the land. Yeah. Yeah, I, I would say that the issue really with parking. I mean, if you have a commercial license, you're able to park on the beach. Um, you know, so Melissa and I don't generally have a problem. I mean, there's usually somewhere you can go. You can also drive on the beach a little bit. But I think um, it seems like the recreational shell fishermen struggle with parking because you can only park on the side of the road there. You can't park on the right side because of the marsh. And I'm not really sure what the solution would be because the road's skinny. And I, I can't imagine they're going to expand it um, to allow for more parking kind of like a Sewell's gutter situation there. Um, I would add too that the other day I was there and somebody was parked in the turnaround. Yes, that happens so often. And I wish that there was some way that it could be clear, no parking past this point because it, when someone parks in the turnaround, nobody can, people either can't get by or they can't turn around. Yep, yep, I've encountered that. I've actually had to go find, you know, you know, you only have so much time to work on the beach and I've had to go and track a person down in their vehicle, get them to move. So that's and these, these are all, uh, these problems are all north of uh, these parcels we were just talking about up near. Yeah, the this is um, the old, the main access to Chipman's Cove for shell fishing um, with a vehicle would be Old Pier Road. And um, so that has driving access onto the beach. Um, and is that at the uh, north end of the parking lot up by? Uh, see, in this map, so it would be map 22, I believe. Okay. I don't have it in front of me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. But so it's, it's the, nothing the, to do with these parcels. Yeah. yeah. Um, the anything we can do about those parking issues? Whose property is, is the uh, turnaround and the path? the road on. Let's see if I can pull it up. There are town signs there. Yeah. 
So we think it's town owned. I'm just pulling it up here to see. The whole, I believe the whole north end of Indian Neck is town owned. Well, that's Indian Neck. We're talking about the other side. Okay. Oh. Right. So um, Old Pier Road. I'm not sure if I can share my screen, but it's map 22. If anyone's able to pull that up. Yeah, I went, I went down old, old, is this old pier or old pier? Yeah. Old pier road. Okay. And that's okay. public road. It's listed on here and the land just north of it. It's just marsh. Um, I'm it's not conservation. Sure. conservation. Yeah. Okay. So I, I can't see there being any parking extended because it's, it's on conservation. Um, so, you know, I'm not sure, but yeah, at the end of the road, if there's a, you know, there are signs, I believe, along the right side of the road to prevent people from parking on the marsh. But if there's maybe some better signage for the end of the road, do not block beach access or something along those lines, maybe right at the beach entrance. I'm not sure. There is a sign that says no parking past this point, but maybe people just don't see it. <laughs> yeah. So like if there was something like right at that entrance where you can drive a vehicle onto the beach that says do not block this access or something along those lines maybe that's a solution so what do we have to do to get signage going it's the kind of thing where we can just call up uh, dpw or maybe, maybe i could talk to nancy maybe she might know about how to do that If, uh, yeah, I think it's useful to talk to Nancy. Um, I think the only people that park there are recreational shop fishermen, right? Or are there actual beachgoers? So some people do go there to, to walk, I've noticed. Um, beach cleanup, things like that. I mean, people do go there for other reasons, um, but mostly shell fishing. So is this something that uh, you could bring up with uh, the SAB when uh, they meet tomorrow? Possibly. One of you or both of you? I don't know if that has to go to S SAB. It, I, 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 um, I think on our behalf, send a letter to DPW is, and copy Nancy. Okay. Okay. John, you want to draft that letter? No. <laughs> um, I don't know anything about the issue. I could uh, spin myself up on it and draft a letter, I suppose. But Sonia, you uh, do such a great job with the minutes. Maybe you could do the letter. Sure, I could do it. <laughs> Thank you. So just letter to DPW and uh, the signage that you'd like and then copy um, SAB on it. Do we have to make a motion on that? I don't know my uh, Robert's rules of order enough to know whether that has to be a motion or not. Let's assume it does have to be a motion. Can anybody make a motion that Sonia draft a letter to the Department of Public Works regarding the parking signs, wherever it is? So moved. Okay, got a second. Anybody? I'll second it if I can do that. Yeah. Not my phone. Bye. Um, okay, so any discussion on this or shall we, are we ready to vote on it? Barbara? Aye. John? Aye. Sonia? Aye. Melissa? Aye. Aye. Okay. We're down now to pond access. Does anybody know how to get Dyer Pond on the list of great ponds? And that was kind of uh... I will, I will, 
uh, undertake. Yeah, and that was, in my mind is why isn't it on the already on the list of great ponds? Exactly. But I'll I'll find out uh, it, because it's over ten acres, so I'll I will find out what what the rules are. Um, the I could just comment too on the access issue. Mm -hmm. um, the um, the development went before the. Um, I've forgotten the name of the uh, committee now. Um, planning board. Planning board. Planning board. Yeah. And uh, there was uh, considerable concern by the planning board about uh, some water runoff in consequence of the new proposed development, and the uh, further discussion in front of the planning board was uh, is postponed until the uh, developers address that issue. The question of the access remains unresolved. That is the, the new owners are adamant that they own the path. They keep saying that the public can use it. Um, the, but then there's one abutters who uh, Abutters who have been using it for a year point out to that it, it is a it appears to be a registered public path uh, registered in in Barnstable um, yeah I, I heard her description of how she uh, proved that and it sounded pretty flaky and she didn't come up with any document identification so right. I'm not sure that actually exists we could support the um, current abutters, if if it came to, to uh, requiring court action, um, but one of the things to keep in mind is that the the easement right belongs to the abutters. It doesn't belong to the town. Would that depend on what the easement is? Well. It, the, the, the rights were were given to certain properties that are local. They they weren't given to the town, so um, it's it. I'm 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 just a little. I think we have to be careful about what our role is. The. Um... Are you talking about the uh, access to one from 70 Rowell or are you talking about- Yeah, I'm the, talking about the access from 70 Rowell on the path that gets us over to Dyer Pond. Because it sounds like you were describing the, uh, there are two other paths that are in a different development and those do have access written into the plan or whatever. And it does sound like it might be just for the uh, uh, owners in that development. I this think we're goes, sorry. Go ahead. All right. This goes back to my question about public usage. I really feel like this this path is not about a path to Dyer Pond. It's about a private homeowner um, path that may or may not get used by the public, and we have no proof of that. Um, this feels pretty private to me. I, if there were members from the public that do use it. I wish they would come to our meetings and express their concerns, but I feel like we haven't heard that. Yeah. Well, we did have one, one of the local residents come to one of our meetings. This was about two or three meetings ago. Um, yeah, she's a private homeowner, not a yeah. member of the general public. Well, <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Actually, Nancy Nancy made the comment that she used she used that path quite frequently, and I think I heard the same thing um, uh, from the gentleman who's head of the uh, Open Space Committee, Bruce Herter. I think people are probably confused that the path to Dyer Pond, of course, is publicly used, but the path to the power lines before it, I'm not even sure where people would park for that. 
Um, yeah, because that was my question as well, because it's in a private neighborhood. So how how does the general public get to that path? I, I tried yeah. to drive through there and I couldn't really find where it was. I got a little confused in there. So I, you know, I actually found a place to park on, on the side of the road, which is a private road. And then you, you walk across the property under discussion and then you get to the, uh, the power lines and you cross the power lines and you're on a path then, which is seashore path. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but, but I think, uh, Sonia, you're hitting on the, the point of, of concern. I think the, the, the neighborhood, which you drive through or park by, has this right to use the path between the road and the power line. I mean, that's their view of things, but it, and they're, I think they're quite happy to let the public continue to use it. But the, uh, the public is not part, I think, of the legal right. So we can, we can, we can as citizens in, in encourage that the act the general access be continued but we we don't have a legal standing i think yeah and and that's my concern as well because it seems like this is more of an issue within that subdivision and from what it sounds like it doesn't really sound like it's necessarily an issue because the new homeowners are planned to allow passage right through that path like well not, yeah but that the, the trouble is that that if that's their point of view, that's that's fine. And and ten years from now, it could be resold, or they would change yeah. their mind. And it and it, it it the the I think the local homeowners, the existing homeowners, are very concerned that this that their their right be acknowledged, legal right. Yeah. So is it less of a public rights of access issue and more of a, you know, a, a, a neighborhood issue to work out? Well, I think we should support their point of view, mm. but um, it's conceivable that the neighborhood 10 years from now could say, there's, there's too many people using this path, we, we're going to have to keep it just for ourselves. And I think they could, my understanding is they might be able to do that. So that's a risk that we may take. Do we have a copy of the deed that, that says what the neighbor's neighborhood rights are? No. We don't have a copy, yeah. but I, I know where I could probably get hold of it. Yeah. Just if we, if whatever position we take, I, I would just like us to know sort of exactly what the what the rights are of the neighborhood. I'll take that responsibility to see if I can get hold of the actual deed. Okay. Um, I mean, we can always look up the property at the registry. So it might be quicker for me to ask the contact I have. Yeah, yeah. And Melissa, you tried to track that down, didn't you? There was a, a document identified along that path and some map that we saw and you tried to track that down and it led to a dead end well i did a simple plan and book search on the barnstable county registry um which led to another uh map with a way that was um i forget the, what they called it but it was in no way a deed um I couldn't find a reference to a deed. I tried to search names of abutters and of the owners who owned it, who subdivided it. I couldn't find it, but that doesn't mean anything either because I'm just an amateur. <laughs> but I, I do feel like, again, this feels like a private matter to me. It doesn't feel like something that is a public issue. Okay, the map that uh, has some kind of a uh, identification on uh, documentation about that path. 
is, I don't know, it's book 299, page 66. Yeah, and you can just enter that into the search and it'll it'll give you um, it'll give you the map, but it doesn't I couldn't find the deed. Maybe Barbara would have better luck. Yeah. Um, yeah, the yeah, the reason the, why I want to see the deed is to see that's where the easements, any easements, either rights of access, either to the neighborhood or the public, that's it, it should be in the deed, the owner's deed. The the uh, thing that I'm talking about is a little tiny notation along okay. the path, and I can't read it on this cover. Okay. Um, yeah, Steve, that's just a book and page number, and if you enter it into the registry, it'll give you basically another one of those things from a prior year, <laughs> another map, but it's not a deed, which is a certifiable right to yeah. the to the path. Let me see if I can extract the, uh, a copy of the deed okay. for, for Barbara to review. Okay. We don't need a uh, motion for that, do we? No, I don't, I don't think so. I'll just do it. Okay. Barbara, can, can, can I ask a personal question? Every time you're those are some very, pictures of some very interesting buildings behind oh, me. So that, I'm just curious. So that is the Brodeur House. Um, it is a Charles Ender house in Truro. Um, there's two others like it. Um, one is in Wellfleet at the end of my street, actually, at the end of Brown's Neck. Okay. Um, you know, he was this very unique architect. Um, uh, and I, there's, you know, that book, Cape Cod Modern, I think there's yeah, a lot I of, have, well, I have a copy of that. Right. Yeah. So this, this is an enlargement of, a, of, of some photos of the Brodeur house that are in that book. Um, someone on the historical commission knew that I really liked these Hazender houses. So he made, he, uh, made that poster for me, um, which I reimbursed him for, of course, so as not to run afoul um of of ethics laws but yeah it's a very strange very you know unusual house and i i don't know why i like it so much but i do you know i don't know i don't have any training i just like the house great herring herring pond is next on the agenda and i i think what's behind that and I, I, again i'm i'm willing to follow up is that's a great pond and according to Massachusetts law, great ponds are supposed to have public access and there's no, there's no public access to Herring Pond. Much, okay. much of the pond is owned, the, the shoreline is owned by the seashore. Yeah. So I would, we would have to work with them to, to, to see if there could be, we could bring ourselves within uh, uh, the law. Right. Um, there's a parking spot right next to it on the side of the road, but it can only, it, it's only room for like one or two cars. But the pathway from the, that parking down to the, the shore says it's, it's, a, it's private and it does in fact, that pathway crosses private property. It crosses the, the that private property is owned by, by the owner up, up on the hill to the, to the north. If you look look at the, the property map, his his parcel crosses the road and goes goes uh, to the shore of the of uh, Herring Pond. Is Herring Pond uh, one of the uh, Gold Pond trio? Yeah. It, it, the it is one? the pond. It is the pond from which the Herring River actually leaves and okay, heads, so, heads down to the harbor. So that's the middle one. No, no. It's 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 the westmost one. Of uh, four, then. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, I have a, a pretty good relationship with Lauren McLean at the at the um at the seashore. Do you want me to ask her anything or to discuss it with her? Why don't you Why don't you do that? Okay. You know, that, that,
I know that the C short does do some sampling yeah. on the pond and they they put in from the east they have a little put in place on the east side but that is not that is not public and probably shouldn't be public because you you you'd have to park along there and um, to, for the general public to be parking along there would be a mess okay and I don't know why Squire Pond is on the agenda. I can't. I can't remember that. Squire Pond is not worth saving. I don't think. <laughs> I was just trying to find it. <laughs> I was like, Where is it? It's the end of Squire Lane, which is uh, right off of Main Street, uh, off of uh, East Main Street, and it's it's uh, eutrophied. You know, it's basically all weedy. Not, there's no place to park down the bottom there. There's no access unless you uh, have a machete with you. I don't, I don't think it's worth doing anything with. Oh, okay. Now I see. Find it on the map, Sonia? Yeah. It's kind of in the middle of a neighborhood. Kind of. Okay. I mean, I did drive there one time. It's a challenge to turn around once you get down there and you can't see much of the pond because of all the stuff that's grown up around it. Not a great pond, right? So there's no access. No, there, not a great pond. Oh. Oh. Okay. Okay. We'll take Squire Pond off our list. Is there any other business? Uh, NRAB is looking at ponds in the town of Wellfleet. So I'll, I'll, I now remember where Squire Pond is. And our, our, our thought was, I mean, this came up 10 years ago and we did nothing. So maybe we could get something done. Um, there is a, a, a little town landing on Squire Pond. And um, leaving mosquitoes aside, uh, it's near the center of town. So it's, it's an in, it, the thought was it's an interesting and really quite, in my view, uh, pretty, pretty spot right in the center of town. So you've got all this bustle around you and this is a much quieter place. So the, the thought was we'd get a bench and a picnic table or something like that if the mosquitoes would allow. So I'll, we'll follow up on that within RAB. I would like to go back if we could, um, particularly now that Melissa's here to this uh, uh, Lieutenant Island Boathouse issue. I, we have had a number of uh, questions for lawyers and I'm wondering if we, we should go ahead and um, uh, schedule a meeting to discuss those questions with town council. So, some way to move that issue forward. We, we keep, every time we talk about the, the boat house issue, we, we run into legal questions and we need to get them, get them answered and resolve that, those questions. Or have I misstated the problem? I think you're muted, Melissa. Thank you. Um, it was my impression that we were waiting for town council to get back to us about scheduling. Yeah, we, we had made the first step basically. So we clarified the questions. We had a meeting um, with KP Law. Um, we, we reviewed this the last meeting, I think it was, or a meeting before. Um, and so basically they, they had started the work, um, you know, title work and, and all of the things that we covered. And at this point, we're just waiting to hear back. Um, you know, it's my understanding that this this takes a while. Um, you know, so right at this point, we're only looking at like maybe six weeks since we, or not even two months since we had that meeting, I believe, right? Wasn't that like mid-July? So from my understanding, this, you know, Helen was telling me she had waited like months for an answer. 
um, regarding Omaha Road. So I, I didn't have any expectations of this happening quickly, um, especially with the laundry list of questions we had. <laughs> you know, it wasn't like they just had one question. You know, they, they've they've got a bit of work on their hands. So um, you know, I'm sure we can check in and and just see how they're doing. But I I don't anticipate having answers anytime soon. Could you just uh, check and uh, find out if there's been any progress? And yeah, then yeah. report back at our next meeting. Yep. I I th think Sonia, a good way to phrase that question is to is to get um, see if they're willing to supply some sort of estimated time. Okay. Uh, and then once we know, once it actually happens, we'll we'll set up a a conference meeting. Got it. Okay, that's fair enough. Is there any other business? Hearing none, do I hear a motion to adjourn or is that too premature? I'll second that. I didn't hear the motion yet. Oh, sorry. I'll, I'll move, move to. Okay. A second. I'll move to adjourn the meeting. Second. We have to. I'll second it. Do we have to vote on adjourning? Yep. Okay. Barbara? Aye. John? Aye. Sonia? Aye. Melissa? I saw the eye, you're muted, but I understand. Good enough. Said. And I'm uh, I. Who, um, okay. who is in charge of our next meeting? Oh, that's old business, isn't it? Or other business. I could chair the next meeting. Thank okay. you. Sarah. Thank you for volunteering. Okay. Take care, guys. Okay. Thanks, Steve. Good meeting. Yeah. Thank you.